there are a few people who have messaged us to say they're still logging on. So can we give them, we're just going to give them a minute or two just to resolve their connection issues and in place. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. And all those, also those on YouTube, uh, then it's great to have you uh, linked on YouTube and, and joining us from there as well, alhamdulillah. And it's good to see you all, those of you who can come on camera, that would be amazing. And just to mention to parents that this is a session that is recorded and broadcast live. So if you don't wish your children to be recorded, then you can keep off camera. Otherwise, it'd be great to have your children on camera. And do look at renaming yourself as well, inshallah. Put down um, your name and your year group. And if you can fit it in, even your school. So we can say, see Sumeya Suleiman has put down year two. And a few others have mentioned uh, their age group. It really does help us when we're interacting with you guys uh, to know your name and see how old you are as well, inshallah. So take a second or two to rename yourself and make sure that's all taken care of. And we have, I'm just checking if Muhammad Ali is here. If Muhammad Ali is here or family of Muhammad Ali, just raise your virtual hand or uh, come off mute so we can know that you're here just so then we can see you and know that you're present so we can prepare for your recitation of Quran so if Muhammad Ali is here if he's not then uh, then no problem at all inshallah we'll uh, we'll see how that goes and just a reminder um, for everyone inshallah we are live here on zoom so you can let your friends and family know uh, that they can join us alhamdulillah we had a great session yesterday and we're thoroughly looking forward to the session today, as well as those on YouTube. Welcome, everyone. We can see Sabiha's there and Norsheen's there, um, and uh, the Riz family is there as well. Great to have you all here uh, on YouTube, watching us live on our live streaming page. And it's great to have all of you children here as well. Uh, so it's a, it's a fantastic turnout. And we still have people logging on. So we're just going to squeeze out another minute or two from you all. Just be patient with us, inshallah, so we can have uh, everybody connected. Um, and we reminder that, inshallah, we have our final session for this half term tomorrow, inshallah. So Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday is the Quran story time. And uh, we will have Ustad Sahel back with us tomorrow, inshallah. Very excited to have him here uh, for that session, inshallah. However, let's let's now um, begin and welcome everyone formally to the Quran story time uh, for this today's session. Welcome. Great to have you all here. Zakallah khair. Real pleasure. And I just want to check if Muhammad Ali managed to join uh, because he was looking to possibly recite Quran. So if he's there, then he could raise his virtual hand or he can come off mute or anything like that. And if he's not, then it's no problem. We'll allow us to crack on with today's session. I don't see him here, so alhamdulillah, we will uh, we will proceed with our session for today. So, um, so Bismillah. Let's welcome our favorite of one of my favorite stars. But I always say that when Ustad Sahel comes, I say he's my favorite Ustad. When Ustad Masood comes, I tell him he's my favorite Ustad. So welcome Ustad Masood to this amazing session. Uh, which and we're very very blessed and glad that you're here. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for joining us. And today's session is about the amazing Prophet Suleiman alayhisalam. So first of all, welcome. Tell us uh, what you've been up to in your half term a little bit, Ustad, and uh, what you're um, what you're going to, and then you're able to just maybe share your presentation for today. Assalamualaikum Jazakallah khair. I have uh, travelled up to Manchester to see my uh, in-laws. So Alhamdulillah, I'm uh, enjoying the rain in Manchester that you probably are not enjoying in London. No, guessing. it started raining today actually, Ustaz. So it's raining in London as well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're all uh, blessed by the rain. But today, inshallah, as you have already uh, announced, mashallah, we're going to be looking at the kingdom of Suleiman alayhi salam. As you know, last uh, session, Dawood alayhi salam, he is the Prophet, he's the father of Suleiman alayhi salam. And we want to look at, uh, first we're going to look at his kingdom. What was his dua for a kingdom? What Allah gave him? And then more importantly, 
more importantly, what did he do with his kingdom? So we need to learn lessons. Yeah. What do we do with things that Allah gives us? So let's start with the first thing that we are going to talk about. Can anybody tell us what that is? You can uh, type in the chat if you like, or you can uh, raise your virtual hand and we can hear from a few of you. Everyone's very shy today, Ustad. So uh, the neighbor says, is it wind? Yes, exactly, mashallah. So Allah gave Sulaiman the power to control the wind. Imagine if you could do that. Yeah, imagine if you could tell the wind, take these clouds away because I feel like going out and playing football today. Imagine that. So that's one blessing. Let's have a look at the next blessing. All right, you can tell us a bit about this next picture that's come up. So Hajra and Maryam and Aisha are saying they're talking to the animals. Yes. Can anybody give us a bit more detail? You can raise your virtual hand if you want and come off mute. Who would like to share? Well, let's have a look at the chat, Ustad. And some of them are saying, uh, Fatima is saying, understand the language of animals. And so is Nuseiba. Yes, very good. So he could, he could understand uh, the birds. Imagine if you could go into the park today, as I'm sure you must be doing if you're going out today in the half term, and you could actually understand what the birds are saying to each other. And even more interesting, if you look at the second uh, animal there, you can tell us a bit about that one. So Nuseba is saying, is it an ant? Yes, he could even listen to the ants. Now the ants, you can't, have you ever heard an ant? Has anybody ever heard an ant speak? Yeah. I haven't. <laughs> that, that shows you he had some really supersonic hearing. Yep. He could hear the ants and not only hear them, he could understand ants. So here Allah is giving him lots of powers to be able to do lots of things that a lot of us would dream. As a third object. Who can explain this third object to us, this third picture? I think people are thinking. Oh, Naseba, let's ask Naseba. You can come off mute, Naseba. What would you like to suggest? Accept the prompt, Naseba. Okay, so he had an army. Excellent. And who can tell us a bit more about the army now? Uh, he had gins and like people and lots of other animals. Good. And what is this this uh, picture telling us about his army? He had a lot. All right. He had a lot of them. What else is it telling you? He was very powerful. Powerful. So, yeah. He had lots of people. Oops. Look at how they are all placed. How are they standing or sitting or flying? In order. They're all in order, aren't they? Yeah. They listen to their his orders. They would stand up straight in a line, a bit like when you stand up for perhaps assembly or going to class. And uh, let's move on to the last picture here. Who can elaborate about this last one that's just come up? So, so Ajra Hamza point. said that it's food. Okay. Anybody else, you can raise your virtual hand. Zaid said, is it make, can, he can make gin? Wait, he couldn't make, he couldn't make gins. Allah creates jinns. Uh, 
and the paper saying the jinn served him food. Okay, sort of. They served him. They did what he said. They would make these big, huge pots. They would build things for him. And who can tell us about this last one? Allah gave him the power to build what? Nusayba says that he wore armor and Wajia said that he had an army. And Good. So Allah taught him and Dawud the ability to be able to create armor for defense and for his army so that they can be strong against the enemy. So this is just uh, introducing us to look at the kingdom of Sulaiman And this was all the result of His dua. This is his dua. Who is going to recite this dua for us that I'm highlighting? Yeah, Nusayb has got her hand up. Bismillah. Nusayb, do you want to come off mute? Can you read that? Okay. Wahhab li mulk la yam baghi li ahadim min baadi. Mashallah, excellent. Very clear recitation. You are obviously somebody who recites Quran regularly. Mashallah. Now, a bit more challenge now, yeah? Let's put a bit more challenge in this. Who can tell us what that means? Let's ask Zaid. Zaid, do you, want, do you know what that means? Accept the prompt to unmute. Say it's not coming off mute. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else knows what that means? I'm going to ask somebody in this room who I'm sitting next to. There's some kids here. Does it mean uh, and give me a kingdom that no one after me will have? MashaAllah. Excellent. Well done. Yes, it means, oh Allah, this is his dua, yeah? So this is his dua. Oh Allah, give me a kingdom that nobody after me would be able to have. So this is an amazing dua that came true, didn't it? It came true. And it came true because he had, he had this, I'm pointing at him. What is this one so I'm pointing at right now? Who's going to read that to us? What does it say in the heart shape? Raise your hand, Fatima. Fatima Zahra, do you want to? Qalb yeah. Salim. MashaAllah. Qalb ah. Salim. What does Qalb mean, anyone? So people are typing in the chat. Aisha types heart. Heart. Very good. Heart. Excellent. And Salim means Salim means Nusayba says, does it mean sincere? Okay, that can be one pop meaning, sincere. Fatima says peaceful. Good. Yep. Anything else? Aisha says truthful. Truthful, yep. Nusayba says repentful. Okay, we're going to come to repentance. Usually it's translated as sincere and pure for now, yeah? So he had a heart that when that heart made dua, that dua came true. So the lesson for us, what's the lesson? You can share your lessons, you can type it in the chat, or you can raise your virtual hand. So Fatima says to make dua is one of the lessons. Yeah, good. But which dua is accepted if you have what? 
Let's ask Nosebo again. Nosebo, what do you think? To like make dua sincerely and like purely and not just like. Good, good. Have a sincere heart that makes sincere pure dua and Allah accepts it. All right, let's move on. That's one of his duas. Let's look at another quality of uh, Suleiman alayhi salam that Allah loved. I want somebody to recite that for us, please. The very short part of the ayah. Okay, let's ask Fatima if she can recite that for us. Fatima, do you want to? Ni'mal abd innahu awal. Awab, very good. Who can translate that? What does that mean? Have a go. You can type your translation in the chat if you like, or you could... Raise your virtual hand. I think, I think you've got them stumped on that one or something. All right, no problem. Ni'mal Abd means the best servant. And he was a wab. A wab means somebody who always turns back to Allah, always thinks of Allah, always remembers Allah does what Allah likes because you're always thinking about what Allah is, what Allah likes, what Allah wants. He is uh, the best of servants because he is always turning back to Allah. All right, moving on. Look at this, amazing. Grateful to Allah. He is grateful to Allah. Who can uh, recite that, please? The third one. Let's have some brave people. Give it a go. There's nothing. You can. There's nothing if you get wrong. It's okay. Anybody other than Fatima wants to give it a go. No problem. I've got some kids there. Who are happy oh to yeah. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah, ladhi fadlna ala kathir. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah, ladhi fadlna. Ala kathirin. All right, let's challenge you now. What does it mean? What does it mean? Anyone? Let's start with Alhamdulillah. What does Alhamdulillah mean? The Saber writes, is, does it mean all praises be to Allah? Very good. So all praises to Allah, the one who, the one who faddalana, faddalana. Yeah, Nusayba, go ahead. Um, favored us. Favored us. Excellent. MashaAllah. Excellent. Favored us. Above many people, meaning more than many, 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 many other people, Allah, he, is, he has given us so many favors. So we thank him. We are grateful to him. He was grateful for all the things that Allah gave him, all the duas that he made. Allah accepted his dua, answered his dua, gave him what he asked, and then he is grateful. Last aspect of his personality look at what he's asking Allah now I'm not going to expect anybody to explain this or tell me the translation but I just want somebody to recite it that's all who would like to recite that Ustad, are you able to make it a little bit bigger uh, I might be able to, but let, let me just come out and there we go Oh, that might make it easier. Who would like to recite that? Okay. If there's no volunteers, I can ask maybe I'll ask a few kids here to write recite a bit of it. 
each. So we'll start with Talha. If you can recite the first, uh, let's say, four words. Very good. Next. Anamta. Last line. Alayya wa wa alay wa ala wa ala wa alidayya. Very good. Rabbi awzi'ni. All right. I want everybody to re repeat this dua. We're going to make this dua together. Yes, and we're going to then learn the meaning. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mata kallati. An amta alayya wa ala walidayya. It means, Oh Allah, my Rabb, please give me the ability, give me the control, self control, give me the discipline to do what? An ashkura ni'mata kallati an amta, to be grateful for all the favors you have given me. Wa'ala walidayya, and for me to be grateful to who? Parents. To be grateful to parents. I'm going to just add something there because I can't write without this. I'm going to write here. I want you to think about this while I'm going to write here. Grateful to Allah first. And then grateful to parents, parents, parents. If you want your dua to be accepted, you have to ask Allah Ta'ala, our Rabb, our Lord, the one who gives us everything, to give us the ability to be grateful. Because you can't be grateful until you ask Allah Ta'ala to give you help to make you grateful to Allah for all the things He's given us. And to be grateful to our parents. This is beautiful advice of, uh, not advice, the du'as of Sulaiman alayhi salam starts with a clean heart. He's given the biggest kingdom ever. He's always turning to Allah. He's grateful to Allah. And he's asking Allah, help me to be grateful to you and to be grateful to my parents. Okay, let's move on to after he had all of these abilities. Look what he used all his powers and favors to do. You know the story of the Queen of Sheba or the Queen of Saba. This was a this was a people that worshipped the sun, and when his hoopoe bird saw this. The Hooper bird came back because the Hooper bird was one of his soldiers. Came back to Suleiman and said, There are people who worship the sun. Suleiman then wrote her a letter. Let's read what he said in this letter. All right, I'm going to make that a bit bigger so that you can read it. To us, who's going to read this from the group online first? Then we'll come to the people in this room afterward if we have to. So this is the letter of Suleiman to Sheba, Queen Queen of Sheba. Let's ask uh, Fatima if she wants to have a go at reading this. Innahu min Sulaimana wa innahu bismillahu rahmanu rahim. Masha Allah, beautiful. Again, you are a. Obviously, somebody who recites Quran regularly, mashallah. Innahu min Sulaiman. This letter is from Sulaiman. And this letter starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, Sulaiman is sending a letter to the Queen of Sheba or Saba. And he is beginning it with. This is from Suleiman. He is starting with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
And then his message is in the next ayah. And we need somebody else to now recite this bottom part. Okay. Anybody? Or I've got some volunteers here in the room if nobody's happy. Okay. Ala Ala Tarlo Alaya. What Tony Muslimi? Masha Allah, excellent. Ala Tarlo Alaya. What Tony Muslimi? All right, let's throw out the challenge. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'm challenging you on purpose for you to start thinking I need to learn the meaning of Quran as well. I'll give you... So Nuseiba, Nuseiba has raised her hand. Mashallah, go for it. Go ahead, Nuseiba. Uh, do not um, tr like transgress uh, upon me and um, become Muslims. Beautiful, mashallah, and say excellent. It means do not become proud and don't think you are too big. But you should come to me, Muslim. You should become Muslim. This is teaching us that Sulaiman salam, with all his powers and all his ability and all his army. He did one thing which was the most important thing, which was to give that what? To invite, invite people to become Muslim. This is the most important thing that he did. He wanted all his powers, all his abilities, all the armies for one thing, to be grateful to Allah and his parents and to invite people to Islam and we know that the queen of Sabah she became Muslim Alhamdulillah so let's now just quickly recap we have learnt today that when we make dua with a pure heart Qalbim Salim Allah can give us whatever we ask for if we are pure as long as we turn back to Allah as long as we thank Allah as long as we keep thanking our parents and we continue to give da'wah, we invite people to become Muslim, then Allah will be pleased with us just as he is pleased with Sulaiman and his father Dawood and all the prophets. He is pleased with them because uh, they did these things. We ask Allah, we also make dua. Oh Allah, make us. Give us this Qalbin Salim, give us this pure heart that would be grateful to you, would turn back to you, would be grateful to our parents. Most important thing after Allah, parents. Love them, honor them, respect them, obey them. They love you more than you can imagine and uh, invite people to also become Muslim. We are, alhamdulillah, done with that story. Very briefly, if you have any questions, anything to add, Bismillah, I'll hand it over back to Brother Akhtar. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Excellent, excellent session, Ustad. Really, really brilliant. Allah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Does anybody have any questions for Ustad Masood that they want to ask him before I've got my questions that we're going to ask everyone? For? So Zaid's got a question. Go ahead, Zaid. Yeah. Zaid, do you have a question? Or you just wanted to come and shout on the screen? All right, no worries. That's fine. Okay. So we got we're gonna we're now gonna go with the uh, with some some questions that we have for everyone. So this is an opportunity for you to test what you've learned, see if you've paid attention to what Ustad Masood has been speaking towards. And also those of you on YouTube, you also get to answer so you, you can place your answer in the chat box for the uh, for each of these uh, questions. So let's have a look at 
sharing the first question with you. And here it comes. So the question is, which one of the following are gifts that Allah gave to Prophet Sulaiman Is it that he could control the wind? Is it B, he could speak at to and control the birds and the animals? Or C, was it that the jinn were under his control, carrying out, carrying out deep sea deep dives and missions for mining minerals? Or D, was it all of the above? Was it A, he could control the wind? B, he could speak to the, and control the birds? C, he could speak and control to the jinn? Or D, he could do all of the above? Type, uh, put your answer in the... Uh, answer box that you can see on your screen and we will then publish the answers those of you on youtube you can place your answers a b c or d and we'll give you another five seconds so very quickly put down an answer any answer you can think of and let's have a look at this together and here we go so let me share the results with you and we have a bit of a split here Ustad. i don't know if Ustad is still with us but we have 20%, 19% who said he could control the wind. B, somebody, one person said that he could speak to and control the birds. C, the jinn. And D, was all of the above, which was the most popular answer. 71% of you said D, which is all of the above. And that is the correct answer. Well done, everyone. So those of you who got D and then on, uh, on the Zoom chat, uh, Sirati Mustaqim, put down D as well. Well done for all of you getting that correct answer. And that is uh, the correct answer for that particular one, all of the above. Let's go to question number two. And question number two, here we go. So question number two, what does the story of the Prophet Suleiman inspecting the horses teach us? Now, Ustad didn't speak about this. So this is going to test your general knowledge. Does it mean A, do not train horses, they should run wild? or B, do not harm animals, or C, get other people to do your jobs so you don't get busy, or D, when something from the world, the dunya distracts us from remembering Allah. You should be somebody who remembers Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Nusayba and everyone, don't need to type the answer in the chat, just put it in the answer on your screen, choose A, B, C, or D. Those of you on Zoom as well, place your answer as A, for do not train horses, B, do not harm animals, C, get other people to do your jobs, or D, when something of the, the world distracts you, remember Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you another five seconds to put your answer through. A few of you still thinking about it. I'm going to close it, so quickly punch any answer you want, and let's have a look at the results. Ah, now we've got a bit of a split here between b which is do not harm animals which is right however the story of Suleiman al-islam inspecting his horses and what happened he was inspecting his magnificent horses and he got distracted from the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he forgot to remember allah for a long time and it was maybe at the evening time maybe he forgot his prayers or he forgot an, a dua and this distracted him so the lesson we learn from this is when something of the world distracts you from remembering Allah, you should come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always return back to him so you do not get distracted because we get busy in life and we can easily get distracted. So excellent. Well done for those of you. 63% uh, of you got the right answer there. Well done for, for getting that correct answer, even though we didn't cover that today. So let's have a look at question number three. Question number three. When the Prophet Suleiman was marching with his, anim, uh, with his army, which creature was worried about them being crushed? And this is mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. Is it A, the ant, B, the bird, C, the hungry caterpillar, or D, the gruffalo? So is it A, the ant, B, the bird, C, the hungry caterpillar, or D, the gruffalo? There's always somebody who writes in a strange answer. So. Have a look and type in the answer on your screen, A, B, C, or D. And those of you on YouTube, do put in the answer that you can think on the screen. Is it A, B, C, or D? Is it the ant? Is it the bird? 
Is it the hungry caterpillar or the gruffalo? Give you another five seconds to put your answer. Which, when Prophet Suleiman was marching with his army, which animal or which species was worried about being crushed? And let's have a look at the results. And mashallah, everyone par, one person who put gruffalo, every one of you were right, it was the ant. It was the ant who was worried and starts warning people about being crushed. So well done, all of you. So let's go down to question number four. Question number four, let's see how you do on this. And this is another part that we didn't cover today, but let's see your general knowledge. Who did the Prophet Suleiman write a letter to inviting them to be Muslim? Was it the Pharaoh? Well, actually we did cover this. The Pharaoh, was it the King of England? Should be the Queen of England, maybe. The Queen of Sheba, or was it Nimrud? which was the king of Babylon. So was it A, Pharaoh, B, the king of England, C, the queen of Sheba, or D, Nimrod, the king of Babylon? Which prophet did Suleiman salam write a letter to inviting them to accept Islam, to become a worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without associating any partners? Was it A, Pharaoh, B, the king of England, C, queen Sheba, or D, Nimrod? We'll give you another five seconds to put your answer through. And then, okay, and let's close the score, the, the poll, and let's share your answers. And mashallah, 74% of you got the right answer, which was the Queen of Sheba, mashallah. Queen of Sheba was the one that Suleiman wrote a letter to, inviting her to accept Islam, not Nimrud, the king of Babylon. So, final question for today. Let's see how you guys do. And this is, what was the special bird that informed the Prophet Suleiman about Queen Sheba and her people? Was it the hoopy bird? Was it the eagle, the red robin, or the wise owl? And what happened here? The Prophet Suleiman was inspecting all of the species all of the animals and the jinn and the insects and the birds and etc and there was one bird out of space there was a gap in the sky and you could see there was one bird missing what was that bird that was missing because that bird was on a mission to find out and he had recovered information and found out that the queen of sheba had a people there and that they were not people who were worshiping allah was it a the hoopoo bird or b the eagle or C, the red robin, or D, the wise owl. Those of you on YouTube, have a look and see what you've written. And I can see some of your answers. So let's have a look at the final question for today and share the results. And excellent, mashallah. The hoopy bird or the hoopoo bird, which is 74% of you, got the right answer. That was the bird that informed Suleiman about Queen Sheba and her people. So really well done and well done those of you on YouTube as well, such as Sabiha and Noshin and Sirat al-Mustaqib. All of you got the right answer and very well done. And we would love you to just share with us one final question to, to have a look at before we complete for today. And just how many people have attended and listening to this session? Please do complete the question on your screen, inshallah, so we can know how many people have attended and benefited from today. So we want to end today now by thanking you for being here and remind you that our final session excitingly is tomorrow, 6.30 inshallah. So be, please do come on time, invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, your cousins, your brothers and your sisters and everyone to come and join us for 6.30 tomorrow inshallah for the final part of the story of Dawood and Suleiman salam, an epic journey about the Prophet's king, inshallah. So now we get to say salam to you. So you can come off mute and say salams, and we will see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalam. Jazakallah khair. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. We see you all tomorrow, 6 30, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, Aisha. Well done. Thank you for being here.
السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام سي لايك السلام عليكم